Hi, and welcome to another edition of GTV How To. I'm GTV coordinator Adam McCune, and on this episode, if you couldn't guess, we're going to be talking about cameras. We're going to be talking about the cameras we have here at GTV that you can check out to do your own productions that are going to be airing on the channel and that are just for you. Um, and we're also going to be talking about some basics of cameras altogether, also some other cameras that you might have at home that you can utilize to shoot video, produce television shows, or just for things that you want to do on your own. So let's begin. Now, once again, these cameras are available, kind of a library system to check out for Gostown residents. You don't have to be a Comcast customer or anything like that. This is strictly for Gostown residents. And the end result has to end up on the channel. So you can't go out here and take one of these cameras, for instance, and try and do some sort of major motion <laughs> picture or something like that and not expect it to air on the channel. The other thing, though, with that is any content you produce, you own. We don't own any of the rights to it other than we want to air it. It is strictly your show. Whether you do it in the studio here, outside of here with our equipment, it's all for you. We're all about the First Amendment and we're all about helping you to create television. In fact, uh, the best way for us to explain that is that we are facilitators to help you create television the way you want to. So let's dive right into some of the basics, uh, some of the basic cameras that we have here at GTV. We have this big boy right here. This is a Sony. It's kind of an over-the-shoulder camera. This is a, considered a hard drive camera, and you can see it's got this little shoulder rest here. And that's kind of the classic television look that you're thinking about, probably. This camera, for most instances, uh, it's kind of our backup camera, actually. It's fairly new. We have uh, this nice little screen that pops out of the top of this that you can see it rather than using the eye cup. That's the other way that people do it. Um, but it doesn't require any extra cards or tapes or anything like that. And that's kind of the beauty of it. It shoots in HD. Our channels broadcast actually in standard definition. But go out to Best Buy or something and try and find a standard definition camera these days. It's almost impossible. Everything is in HD. And basically the way it works, if you shoot in HD and you start going down into standard definition, that's not the worst thing. The quality is actually going to be very good. A lot of the productions that we shoot here for staff produced uh, pieces or things that are shot out in the field with these cameras, they're all in HD and they come back down to standard definition and they look great when we do that. So for the most part, this camera doesn't get used by the public a lot. A lot of times it's staff. Um, but you can see some of the differences here as we go down through these cameras. There's a microphone, um, there's the high definition, there's a few things that kind of you, you get on the higher end cameras that you don't get on the lower end cameras. One of the most popular cameras that we have here available to check out is these Panasonic cameras. We actually have two of these cameras and you can see the, the, the way this is, it's a little bit more lightweight than the Sony camera. It has some very professional features on this one including again this microphone and what's kind of great about these cameras is that microphone this is called a shotgun microphone so when you have a, a lower end camera it has a tiny little pinhole this one is picking up a lot more audio and it also has this little box that's on here what's great about this box that's on this camera is we can actually detach it we can we can put it onto it we can we can plug in external microphones and including this one in fact, if we flip this over, there's uh, the microphone cables right there. That's called an XLR uh, microphone input, and that's a standard microphone. So when this becomes valuable is when you're taking your production that you're doing out in the field and you want to take it up to the next level. I say this all the time. Sound is almost more important in a video production than the video itself. If we have a meeting on channel 22, for instance, and there's no sound on it, there's no point to have the meeting because you don't know what's going on. So, and that has happened. Um, so what we like to do is we like to make sure we have the best audio available. So with this camera and with some of the other higher end cameras, you can take these wireless microphones and you can, you can actually see this has that nice little XLR input on it. And that's a standard microphone input. And what this is, is this is the receiver. So this can actually go, this is called a shoe. It goes right in the shoe and all these cameras all have a shoe and it'll slide right in there. It'll go in, you'll hold it into there, you can plug it in, and then you have this microphone that's wireless. So you can wear this microphone, which I'm actually wearing one right now, um, on whoever's talking, 
and or you can actually take these and kind of plant them somewhere so you know you're going to get some good audio in whatever you're shooting and it makes a world of difference. The way these are set up you can actually split those two different tracks of audio and you can do all sorts of things with them. These are phenomenal cameras. Um, they're available for checkout and again we have two of them. When we're doing a sporting event someone always gets one of these and they also get one of these cameras. It's a little bit lower end. This is probably something you're more used to seeing is a can uh, camera like this. This is a Canon and uh, these are pretty new. We have two of these as well. So if we're doing a sporting event it's one of each of these cameras we check out and uh, we take one and put it on a scoreboard and the other one follows the action. A very simple way for us to do, um, for volunteers to do uh, sporting events. But these cameras are more consumer based cameras. They're, again, they have this nice little flip out. Um, this is kind of a standard thing when you're, when you're shooting video. This is what you see like some of the parents might have these for sporting events. Um, just like the Panasonic, I didn't really show this, but this will actually flip this way. The reason that does that is so that you could put this on a tripod. Again, we'll talk about tripods in a little bit. You can put it on a tripod and you could stand in front of it and you could talk like I'm talking right now to a camera. You could do something like that on your own. The reason that these cameras are the ones that we purchased, we made some, some very uh, you know, direct choices about the cameras that we have here. There's a microphone input on this. Now most cameras that you're going to see that are out there um, on the consumer level cameras, they don't have a microphone input at all. These have an XLR input um, as does the Sony, uh, the Panasonic and the Sony have them. This one actually has this little, it's kind of like a headphone jack input and we have some microphones that will fit into that. We have some wireless ones and we have uh, another microphone on the other camera that we have uh, that's like this that actually sits up on top much like these do. And again, that takes it to the next level. This camera and this camera both operate on these SD cards. You've probably seen these. They're kind of a standard uh, thing. We actually have these, so if you're going to go check out a camera, we do have them with the camera, and we format them before anybody takes it out. So we format the, uh, the card, they come in, they check it out, they have everything ready. We try and make sure that they're ready with the, the batteries as well. Um, both of these cameras, again, are available on a checkout system and they have extended life batteries. The Panasonics will last about seven hours recording, which on one of these cards you get about three hours out of 32 gigabytes. So it'll outlast the cards, actually. Um, those are the cameras that we have available for checkout. Now, if you're willing to take your production to that next level that we were talking about, we also have uh, some other things in here that are, that are pretty, uh, pretty awesome. This is an audio recorder. It's a little Tascam unit. Um, is very handy. I, I actually have another one like this. This is my own. It's a Zoom is what it's called, Zoom H2. And this one doesn't really have any inputs. Uh, and this one does, which is the basic difference. And this Tascam recorder, if you planted this somewhere, let's say you're going to go down and you're going to record a um, concert down on Main Street, uh, something that they're going to be doing this summer again. And you planted one of these recorders out there and you've mixed it together with your video production. Um, they're phenomenal. They pick up a lot. The microphones that are on these, it actually has two microphones. You can split it up for different directions. It's pretty simple. And what's also great is it has that familiar, again, XLR inputs on this. So you can actually record microphones that you plug into it, which is uh, a phenomenal little device. Uh, we've used it a lot on some of the productions that we've done here. And uh, we get a lot of use out of it. And it's also available for checkout. Again, you're going to have to kind of be bringing your stuff to the next level. I also want to talk about some of the other tools you could use. We have some older cameras here, too. We have this one. This is a Canon GL2. These were fantastic cameras uh, just a couple of years ago. And the reason they've kind of went to the wayside is because they use tape. And the problem with tape, they put the little tape inside of this part right in there. The problem with tape, you've probably seen these little mini DV tapes before, is that it's linear. So when we take a footage from this, we actually have to import it into the camera in real time. When we import footage from this camera or this camera or just about any other camera today and you take out the card and put it in, you're transferring a file, which is infinitely quicker than doing it in real time. So um, there are some benefits to that. There's also just the standard point and shoot camera. You may have something like this at home. And if you really look at it, 
on almost all of these, there is a movie mode where you can actually flip it into movie mode and you can take video with it. Now, there's obviously some downsides to this. Uh, most notably, if you look on the cameras, sometimes you can find them, sometimes you can't. There's a little pinhole, and that's all you get for the microphone. So your audio is going to suffer on a camera like that. But if you're not going to be concerned with that, if you mix something like these two things together, you can actually get a pretty decent video production out of it, amazingly so. And the other thing, too, that I'll talk about is, just very briefly, is uh, mobile cameras, um, mobile phones, I should say. This is the iPhone that I have, and it will take pretty great video, uh, pretty great photos, in fact, too, and you can edit right on that. And in another episode here of GTV How To, we're going to dive into mobile editing and mobile production, how you can actually shoot and edit everything right on a phone. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. Uh, Android phones do that, or tablets, for that matter. Um, my personal setup that I use is called a digital SLR. This is actually a micro four-thirds camera. I have a little audio recorder here up on top, and this is my own personal camera. There are some downsides to this. Uh, most notably, uh, some of the downsides are actually some of the positives as well. This is a really old manual lens that I have on this. It doesn't autofocus at all. So that can be a problem when you're trying to do something like a sporting event, uh, which goes very fast. Uh, these cameras you can set to autofocus, and it's kind of set it and forget it, which is great. But a camera like this, you have to make sure you're focusing all the time, and that can get kind of uh, tedious. But the benefit of, of it is I can actually take this lens that's on here, and I can take it right off and replace it with a different kind of lens. So there's so many different lenses out there, and the added benefit with that is you get kind of a cinematic look to it. Um, when you look at uh, a Hollywood production, you're going to notice that there's a, a very narrow depth of field. Look in the background on something, anything on television, really. Um, and a lot of times you'll see that it's kind of blurred out in the background, but everything is in focus on the things you're supposed to focus on. And that's kind of the benefit, that look of digital SLR or micro four thirds or whatever it is, kind of camera that you're using. Um, and the look can be really great. There's kind of a whole like revolution that's happened with digital photography. There's a ca uh, Canon camera out there. It's a 5D MK2, 5D Mark II that you'd be surprised how many Hollywood movies have used at least a portion of what they've shot in the production um, has been shot on that camera. Um, it's just a phenomenal camera for video. It's expensive too, of course. And those kind of cameras take what we call a compact flash card. So it's a little bit different than uh, you know an SD card. And so we do have some of those here too, but we don't have any cameras really that use them. Um, we did have some older equipment that used that. but. You'll see that when you're out there and you're looking at cameras, you'll see sometimes that they'll have that compact flash. So I promised that we're going to be talking about tripods. Any way you can stabilize the camera is a good thing. If you're going to go out there, and let's say you're going to take one of these cameras, and you're going to shoot something, and you do this. You've got a lot of weight coming out there on your hand, and you're never going to keep that very stable for very long. Um, there's sometimes it's kind of a nice look, but most of the time you end up with really jerky footage because it's heavy, you're holding it for a while, and I mean, try and hold anything steady like that. So what we have here is we have um, tripods, and these are a pretty standard tripod for just about anything that we have. They're heavy duty. Um, they are certainly going to be doing a lot of use uh, for just about any event that we would have. Um, and they're all pretty standard. On the bottom of these cameras, there's this little plate. And just about all these cameras have a plate on them. And all it does is it slides in. And of course, I don't have it locked right now. Um, you slide it in from the back, and it clicks. And then what that does is it actually locks it in. So it'll fall down, but it'll keep it from falling out. So that's kind of a safety device. We turn it and kind of tighten that, and now it's on there. And now, rather than struggling with, you know, just exactly uh, holding it steady in any kind of event, we can do this and we get nice smooth action and we aren't making people sick that are trying to watch the, watch the video, which they will get sick if you do that for too long. There are other kinds of braces out there, so I try not to uh, knock over all of our equipment. There are other kinds of braces out there, um, like this. This is what I use. This is a shoulder brace and you get kind of a little bit of a handheld look but you're not going to be jerking all over the place. 
fact, one of the problems that comes up with modern cameras, like this one or even like this one, is the fact that they're light. Um, that can actually be an issue. Because if you're holding this camera, let's say you're out there shooting this, you're holding this, it's so light that you're going to be moving it around without even realizing it. A tripod will help that. It'll always bring up the production value of anything that you're doing. Um, and stabilizing it in any way that you can is certainly a good idea. Um, the other thing I want to talk about too, if you're going to be checking out any of these cameras, there's just a couple of pieces of paperwork that we have here. There's uh, a producer agreement form, which basically kind of a verifies that uh, you are uh, a resident and that you want to do some productions here at GTV. And then there's also our equipment sign out form. And that's just a way for us to keep track of you know, who has the equipment and what they're doing with it and uh, when it's coming back so we know how it can be reserved. The other thing that I'll talk about real briefly when you're shooting video, um, you can look up uh, more on this too online, is uh, something called the rule of thirds. So if you split everything into thirds on your lens, on your screen, so if you're looking at the camera and you kind of make up this rule of thirds, the intersections of the horizontal and vertical thirds, that's kind of where you want to have your action happening. So what you're trying to do is trying to capture somebody talking well, you want to have them on one of those spaces. In fact, if I were in the frame and I'm talking this way and you're trying to capture me, you want to make sure that there's more space this way when you're doing that. Same with this, if it's on this side. You want to have more space in the frame of your camera on the opposite side of them talking. And it's actually a really easy way to keep track of what's going on so it's not so confusing for somebody who's watching it. But the rule of thirds, if you go online, there's a lot of people um, talking about that. It's, it's good for photography, it's good for videography, and it's an all-around good idea, good principle to uh, grab onto. We won't go into that too much more, but if you want to come down and check out our equipment, if you want to get a tour of the studio here, we are open once again in the back of the high school, back of Gosstown High School. We're open just after school gets out till 9 o'clock, Monday through Friday. We do tapings Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday through those times. So if you stop down, you can kind of check out what we have here and how we can help facilitate you making television for Gostown TV. So once again, that's kind of an overview of our cameras. Hope to see you down here sometime soon. This has been episode two of GTV How To, and I'm GTV coordinator Adam McHugh.